I cannot pretend I own this music. Stranger to my own sin. Hey, Karen. I just repent. You are numero uno. <laughs> Number one with a bullet tonight. In the midst of it all, love your grace was sufficient for me. Uh, whatever you do. Hey, Jen Jen. Deep, deep. My deacons are coming in. Hey, Gertrude. Hey, first lady, leading lady, my wife. What's happening? Mika, Mika. Y'all come on in. Bible study is about to begin. Stay, stay. Home girl in the house. Don't take your joy. From me, Deacon Linda Robeson. Y'all check in when you come in here. Let me know you're in the house. Say something to me. I'm walking. Hey, Lynette. I'm walking in my Corona Afro. <laughs> Deacon Stevens, how you doing? Yeah, my hair is growing out of control. I'm not going to cut it. I'm not going to cut my beard till this is over. Sheila Green, hey, Just. How you feeling? Keish, Keish. Come on in. Okay. Sherry Will. Hey, Miss Shirley. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Deacon Knight. Preacher. Hey, Deborah. Steph, Steph, Deacon Tana, Latasha Connor. Hey, April. That's the other Deacon Knight. B. Stevenson. Mama B. Vanessa Sloan. Martha Everett Brown, y'all come on in, come on in. Joy in the mood, joy in the mood. Kira, Kira, Smitty, Seal. We need the Lord's joy tonight. Every day, really. Deke, you're going to have to ship me a picture. I want to see that beard, man. Hey, my daughter, hey, Karen. Dr. Beverly. What? Hey, my ocean, what's happening, baby? Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Hey. Well, I thank God that he will never take his joy from us. Thank God that we are in the building tonight. We are in building of our temples, our own <clears throat> temples that the Lord has created for us. And tonight we're going to just talk a little bit. I need y'all. That's why I'm having y'all to, hey, Steph, I need y'all to get your fingers ready to, to just start typing questions, start typing um, thoughts. Uh, we are now some two months almost into uh, Coronaville. And it is, hey, daughter, uh, Shanice Palmer, how you, baby? All the way from Atlanta. Um, we are two months into this thing, literally, uh, with understanding. It's been here since November of last year. Uh, but we're two months into Corona. Uh, hey, Dean Gilzine. Um, and now, with the sheltering in place, with the quarantining, um, and, and with the information that we are being presented every day, 
I'm not oblivious to that. And I don't think that, that we ought to try and continue as normal. Hey, Paula B., um, when things are not normal. Y'all feel me? Um, you, you can't see one of the things the church has gotten uh, a bad rap. Veronica C., one of the things the church has gotten a bad rap about, and, and legitimately so, is that oftentimes we will bury our head in the sand and, and we will say, uh, God is going to fix it. Okay, now, now, now let me clarify what I'm saying. Hey, son. Uh, hey, B. We, 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 we know by faith, because mm -hmm, our entire existence as believers, our new life in Christ is a life of faith. We know by faith that God is going to fix it in his time, in his way, uh, the, the, in the manner in which is best for his glory and his um, redemptive process to continue. Are y'all hearing me? Hey, Mo. Um, and, and that's something that we have to understand in the church as the body of Christ is that, listen, God does not exist for our pleasure. Whew, man, that's going to shake up a lot of people right there. God, God does not exist for our pleasure. And I think we've gotten twisted in the church because, because we, are, we are now almost 50 years, almost half a century, we have been inundated with a gospel that is not Christological or biblical. Mm. We've been inundated with a gospel that tells us that we can have what we want when we want it. And when that, when that is challenged by reality, <laughs> when the situations that we experience fly in the face of that gospel that we have been presented, it puts the church in, in several bad lights. First of all, we as the church don't know how to respond. We don't know how to respond because because we've been so enamored with this, I'll say it, prosperity gospel. And the prosperity gospel has a bunch of nuances to it, y'all. But it's confused the church because preachers have gotten rich <laughs> off of the prosperity gospel. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 so, and so the people who should have been according to this gospel uh, naming and claiming and grabbing and, you know, blabbing and grabbing and calling and hauling and lay your hands on it and run around it seven times and you can have what you want and you'll never be, watch this, you'll never be broke another day in your life. You'll never be sick. Ah, uh, now we got a problem because if, if, if what you have been saying to us all these years is factual, and why we have a pandemic all over the world. Why are preachers dying? Why are saints getting sick? Because you've been lied to, God help me here, uh, for over 50 years. And so, and so there comes a time when there has to be a reformation. That's it. That's the word I'm looking for. There has to be a new understanding of old principles that are grounded in, here's the word that nobody likes, truth. Are y'all feeling me? We, 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 have got to, we have got to engage um, going back to the future. Ah, there it is. Our understanding, my daughter just made a profound statement. Shanice Palmer just said that crisis and adversity are, re, are revealing faulty theology. And, and, and that's, that's the reality of where we are. Many of us have been sharing, and I'm not trying to cut preachers in this, in this little initial presentation I'm making, but many of us have been sharing a gospel, watch this, that we heard but we hadn't learned. And, and so, and so because, 
we're sharing what we heard rather than what we learned, experienced, and knew about God. We presented to people something that they could embrace and get excited about, but they could not dig in, develop roots, and stand when the shaking starts. Y'all, hmm? uh, y'all, y'all type Psalm forty-six. Psalm forty-six. Uh, type Psalm forty-six. I need that. I need that to be in your spirit. Now, I asked you last week to read. Um, the Beatitudes, or to read the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and the Sermon on the Mount is, is powerful because <laughs> Jesus was leading a reformation when he came on the scene as a minister of the gospel, as 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 the, the Rabboni, the master teacher. Uh, when he came from his... I don't want to say coronation, but it was uh, when God spoke at the Jordan and he was baptized and the spirit descended upon him like a dove. And then he was thrust into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan, came through 40 days of fasting, came through the temptation of Satan, was tired and hungry, was fed and was strengthened by the angelic host. He goes into the city and he begins to preach the kingdom of God. When he preaches the kingdom of God, the principles of the kingdom of God, watch this, will fly in the face of most religious principles. Now, I'm not talking down religion. Um, religion is how we relate to God. And we have various aspects of that. But, but Jesus now, in the Sermon on the Mount, is, is giving... And under a new understanding of an old principle. And so, and so, and so, and that Psalm 46 for y'all is for y'all <laughs> who are believers. That Psalm 46 uh, says no matter how shook up the world gets, those who are connected to God don't shake down. That's basically what it's talking about. Now, I want you to read that. I want you to keep that in your spirit. Um, but, but tonight, y'all, tonight, in light of especially the latest um, um, the latest transactions, if you will, from our government. Um, we need to understand how to not only maintain our sanity, but we need to understand how to maintain an effective and an efficient walk with God in the midst of an ineffective world and an inefficient government and a, and a, and a disease that threatens to kill us. Because this disease is, I mean, it's real. Uh, there's no question about it. But how does our faith, how does our, where does that come in? Because, see, we pontificate a lot, y'all. We have a conversation. We're going to talk because uh, we haven't even prayed yet. But we pontificate a lot. We, we stand up and say, this is what should happen and that should what's happening. And God is saying, y'all don't know what's going to happen. So are you connected? Here's a question. Are you connected enough to God to deal with the whatever? I'm going to let that marinate for a minute. Because, see, I, I think oftentimes... Um, we get so caught up, and I say we, I'm talking about preachers now. We get so caught up in thinking we have all the answers. Now, let me help y'all real quick. This pastor does not have all the answers. I'm searching just like you. I'm saying, God, I trust you. Did, did y'all hear what I said? I'm saying, God, I trust you. In the midst of everything that's going on, I can, I can say without equivocation that, God, I trust you. Now, whatever else is happening, I'm able to sustain my sanity. Come on, y'all. I'm able to sustain my equilibrium, not because of any other reason than, God, I trust you. Why do I trust you, God? 
Now, somebody answer that. If you, if you can say, I trust God, tell me, why can you trust God? Don't give me no scripture. I appreciate scripture. I thank God for it. Tell me why you trust God. I need somebody to put it on the screen. Why do you trust God? Because if you don't know why you, I'm not talking about the body and I'm talking about the individual now. I'm dealing about I'm dealing with 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 members on the body, fingers, arms, toes, eyes, nose. They, you are one of those members. How? Why do you trust God? You better be able to answer that question with not so much clarity, but with conviction. Because if you don't know why you trust God, you don't trust him. And in situations like this, it will become evident that your trust in God was a mental ascent and it was not a spiritual transformation. I trust God because I have experience in what he can do. That's a good one. I trust God because he's sovereign. I trust God because of what he brought me from. Hallelujah. I got a, he got a track record. I, I've seen his work in my own life. He's got a track record. He created his world. He can do everything. He's got a track record. Come on, y'all. He's in control. Faith and belief because of the evidence I've gotten from myself and him. Now, now, now come on. God is not only a relational God. God creates man in the garden. He says, it's not good that the man should be alone. I will, I will make a help that is suitable for him. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I trust God because of what I know about God. My experience has taught me, no matter what the outcome, he is able. He's my daddy. He's, he loves me because I'm his child. I trust God because he's on time, not when I want him, but when I need him. God, I trust you because you're my Lord and Savior. Come on. Because he knows the beginning, the middle, and the end. He's I'm just reading what y'all saying. Uh, you know, he's never failed me. Uh, okay, okay. So, so if that is the case, you know, because what that will slip into even <laughs> that will slip. We're gonna pray, y'all. Let's pray. Let's pray. Then I then I get into that. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you. We honor you. We give you glory. You are God and you are in control. We know that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And thanks be to God. I'm talking to believers tonight, God. You do it according to the power that works on the inside of us. I thank you, God. Uh, that you have given us a track record of a historical account of your dealings with your people here on earth. And so tonight, as we chat, as we just can, uh, have a little conversation, we pray uh, that you will come on in with your spirit, move by your power, move by your presence, enlighten us in the, pro in the process of this conversation, that you might get glory and our people might be edified, strengthened, built up in every spiritual thing that they might plant their feet on this earthly realm and recognize that you are in control. And then we receive power from you to exact your will here on earth. Have your way with each and every one of us. We pray for those we're duty bound to pray for, those who are sick, those who are, uh, we're all shut in, but those uh, who are unable to fend for themselves, we pray your blessing upon their lives. For those incarcerated, we pray protection around them. We pray that you would loose their spirit, that even though they may be oppressed and down in, 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 in physicality, that you would loose them to be able to experience your presence. God, we pray even now that you would bless those families that have been affected by this COVID-19 virus. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would lift up their bowed down heads. We pray that you would have your way, even right now, in this time together with you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. All right, listen, y'all. What I'm really what I'm really talking about tonight and what we're going to talk about tonight, I'm not going to give you a whole bunch of stuff and, you know, we're going to share some word. Uh, but I just want to talk to you all tonight because I need to know where you are. Because I know even though y'all been with me 16 years, we've been together 16 years. And I pray that and some of you have not been there for that length of time. Um, some of you have been at the U, you know, a year, two, three, four. Uh, some of you have been to the U and gone other places. I'm looking at James Slater in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm looking at people who have traveled. So my, my daughter Shanice is in school in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and so, and so, amen. My also said, even though the pandemic, he's still blessing me. What'd you say, baby? He's still blessing me and he never let you down. Hallelujah. Brought you through uh, all kinds of issues. And, 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 and what I don't want us to start doing as this thing um, 
plays itself out. I don't want us to start being pontifical and, and platitudinal. I don't want us to start spitting out spiritual platitudes. That doesn't help you. <clears throat> That's cute. Makes you makes you feel like you're part of the church and, and, and makes you feel churchy. Um, but but this is, thank you, Linda. That's the reality. We we trust God because He changed our lives. Um, this is a real situation. And and platitudes don't help in real situations. God is good all the time. Yeah, okay. He is, but what's happening now? And so, and so, and so, in, in your God is good all the time, you scared all day long. Hallelujah, cuz, my cuz, Shirley Tillman, bless you. Mm, love you, baby. Love you, baby. Athens, Georgia, my God. Um, uh, you're, 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 you're in the midst of something that is un unprecedented and 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 you can't be so spiritual that you don't know that you don't that you don't acknowledge what's really going on in front of you are y'all hearing me the church gotta stop doing that mess man we gotta stop doing that mess listen we do trust god is why i had the first thing that, that that i would have you to say is that we trust god but here's the reality we in a national an international pandemic people are dying all around us how there is there is something that God gave us called a brain, called a mind. We have we've developed it into science, and we understand that there is a psychological portion portion of us, and your psyche is being affected right now, whether you believe it or not. You you can't be around all this negativity. You can't experience all of this talk about death. And every day on television, they keep telling you how many people died and how many people are dying in your neighborhood and how many people are dying in your county and how many people are dying in your state and how many people are dying in the country and how many people have died across the world. Why don't they tell you how many people have survived? You don't get that information. So when you are inundated and inundated with negativity, there is something called psychological trauma that we got to deal with. And, and, and the saint now, oh God, the saint is blessed because in the midst of times like these, we are able to connect with the, cre listen to me, y'all, y'all need to hear what I'm about to say. We are able to connect with the creator of the universe who the Bible that he gave us as the guide to our living, the Bible says that this creator of the universe loves us. Are y'all hearing me? So, so, so now I've got to now, huh, huh, I've got to now in the midst of this psychological trauma, I've got to be renewed in the spirit of my mind. Because if not, my mind will cause me to allow this trauma to overshadow my entire existence. Are y'all hearing me? And, and, and you gotta, when you don't feel right, you better tell somebody. When, when, you, when you feel overwhelmed, you better tell yourself, I'm overwhelmed right about now. All that, all that, oh, God gonna fix it, that's wonderful. Yes, he will, but if you overwhelmed, there's a reason why you feel that way. It's time for you to get some assistance. It's time for you to, to, to recalculate and recalibrate so that you can do something different because, okay, here, something simple like this. Turn the darn TV off. Let me get up in the camera. Turn off the television. D did y'all hear what I just said? You want to stop feeling depressed? Stop looking at depressing stuff. This ain't this ain't this ain't no deep stuff, y'all. This is just <laughs> this is just common sense. If you constantly are told, I'm going a different direction. If you constantly told you ugly, I don't care how beautiful people have said you are. If you're constantly told you ugly, after a while, you won't believe it yourself. So you have to dismiss some of the things that contribute to your trauma. I like that, Lewis. Lewis said people try to start coping 
and, 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 and your coping mechanism is ignoring the truth and believing the lies. Did y'all hear me? So, 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 so if I, if I'm told something, it's called conditioning, y'all. It's called psychological conditioning. If, if I can, if I can invade your mind enough and pollute your mind with enough of my pollution, whatever that propagandized pollution is, whatever I want you to think, if, if I can continue to bombard you with that information, that information will cause you to believe that that information is actual. And then the response will be that you will begin to uh, 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 reconfigure your thought process and your patterns of thinking to align itself with the misinformation that you have been fed. That's why, that's why. That, oh, Y'all got your Bible. Turn, 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 this, ain't my, this ain't my text tonight. I don't even have a text tonight. We just, we just really conversing. But go to John chapter uh, 8. Oh, God. John chapter 8. John's gospel chapter 8. Watch this. Somebody put John 8 uh, on the screen. John 8, uh, 31 and 32. Uh, uh, watch this. So, so, so really, uh, John 8, 31 uh, through 36. John 8, 31 through 36. Watch this. Watch this. If you're, if you're, hey, D.D., 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 Jeremiah, uh, I'm going to call you D.D. Cox, Jeremiah, because you're a homegirl from Stilton. Bless you, baby. Uh, if you're constantly inundated with information that is, that is negatively affecting your psyche, if you're constantly inundated with false information, you, you will embrace that after a while. And you'll miss the truth. John, watch, watch John 8. John 8, 31 says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you, listen, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Uh, you hear what he says? So Jesus says, listen, I need you to create a living environment. Dear God, that is, that is, that is surrounded by, that is supported by, that is foundationally found in my word. Now, I'm talking to believers. I'm talking to my church. I'm talking to the Union Baptist Church tonight. All of y'all that's on, I love y'all, and y'all need to come on and grab this, but I'm talking to Union tonight. I need you to understand that Jesus is saying to you that the, the house that you're in, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the quarantine that you're experiencing, uh, you've got to learn where to dwell during the quarantine. You, you've got to understand that, that there is a temple that has been built based on your faith. This is that temple. I am, print that, post that, I am the temple of God. We ain't got to go to Jerusalem to get to the temple. It's 2020. This is not Second Temple Judaism. We are not living in the first, second, third, fifth, whatever century. Listen to me. Listen to me. I am. Come on. Come on. Type it. I don't see y'all typing. I am the temple of God. Me. Why, Reverend? Because the very spirit of God. And see, I don't think we really get this thing. We, we talk it, but we don't really understand it. The very spirit of God, which means the essence of God himself. If I talk about the spirit of God, I'm talking about um, one of the triplets in the Trinitarian understanding of the God you serve. We serve God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. All three make one that is a Trinitarian concept of God. We have a God in three, one God in three persons. Jesus Christ showed himself on earth to give us the earthly representation. I just preached this Sunday of who God is and how God is. He leaves the earth. He tells his disciples of which we are that I am going to send back the parakletos, the person who will help you and come beside you. In fact, live inside you to carry you into the place where I have designed for your life. I am that temple in which 
the spirit of God. God help me. Y'all need to really get that in your mind. In the, in, in, in contained in my being is the spirit of God, which means I have God inside of me. So, so, so everything that I need is not on CNN. Everything that I need, God hear me, is not on MSNBC, CBS, ABC, FYZ, Q, X, R. Yeah, I done messed up the alphabet, but yeah, it ain't in it. No. Everything I need is in me. If I'm saved, if I'm a believer in Christ Jesus, God is in me. God help me here, man. Y'all need to hear what I'm saying. See, this is what God is. I, I really believe this, y'all. I really believe this. I believe that God in this season, during all of this upheaval, is forcing us to recognize him. All our lives as Christians, we've been living without the presence of God, and, and he's right here in us. And we just do everything on our own. We say what we want to say. We do what we want to do. And then we talk about, well, that's just who I am. No, no. Paul told you that ain't who you are. Paul told you a long time ago in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, look, look, look again. All things are made new. You are not who you used to be. And the understanding of that now puts you in kingdom uh, dynamics. It puts me in kingdom dynamics. And kingdom dynamics say to me that because I am the temple of God. First Corinthians chapter 6, 7 tells you all about that. I am the temple of God because I have what I need in me. Then I ought to be reflective of that. People ought to see me and know who I am before I say a word. Why? Because I got God in me. How, how can God walk in the room and nobody know it? Mm -hmm. Listen to John. John says... Then Jesus said to the Jews who believe, listen to, what, listen to who he's talking to. No, 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 no. Jesus is talking to um, his own people. The Jews of the first century um, were religious people to a fault. They believed that their practices and principles and protocols uh, of religion was that which gave them relationship to God. That if I'm a law keeper, then I am in proximity to God because of my ability to, to do what the law, listen to me, what the law says. Y'all know the law, Decalogue, Ten Commandments, what was, what was presented to Moses on, on the mountain. God writes the law with his finger, um, gives them the Ten Commandments, and those Jews from that point on... Um, continue to try to live in relationship to God based on their, um, their keeping, their participation in uh, a legalistic thought process or legalistic theology. And so Jesus comes on the scene, he, he messes with that. That's what I told y'all to read, Matthew uh, 5, 6, 7, the Sermon on the Mount. He, he, he blows that whole thing away. He blows that whole thing away. He said, listen, y'all trying to keep the law. Y'all can't keep it. The reason I gave you the law, because the law was a schoolmaster. It was a, Paul talks about it in Galatians. He said the law uh, was, a, was a schoolmaster. It was to keep you in check, to make you understand that you don't have the capacity to keep the law. Because the law is holy and you're not. And the only way you're going to be able to have the law kept in your life is to change what dwells in you. Or more specifically, change who dwells in you. And so Christ now becomes our propitiation. He is the satisfactory substitutionary uh, sacrifice on our behalf because of the sin that we all were born into. We receive Jesus Christ. Christ now impacts us by empowering us, by enduing us or coming inside of us in the person of his spirit. So I am the temple <laughs> of God because contained within my being is that, listen to what I'm about to say, is the spirit of God. The spirit of God is the essential understanding of the characteristics and the attributes of God and the power to activate them in our lives. 
Did y'all hear what I said? The Spirit of God are the essential attributes and characteristics of God and the very power of God to activate his essence, his attributes, and his character in our lives. The Spirit of God helps us to do that. Okay? Now, the Word of God instructs us in what to do so that the Spirit of God can then receive what the Word of God says and bring it into fruition in our lives. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So, so now, once I understand that I am a vessel, I am a temple who is contained or who, who has within me the very character essence, the very attributes and the presence, God help me here, of God Almighty. That ought to change how I think about me. And so, and so, and so now what I need is that thing that will be the catalyst to take who is in me, which is the spirit of God, and give power so that who is in me can be expressed through the way I live. Now, I really believe all this is happening so the church can come back to reality and get back on its track to do what it's supposed to do because we've gotten so distracted. Uh, 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 even in, in, And that's not even just a church thing. That's a worldly thing. I'm going to come back to John in a minute. The world is shut down, and what we're discovering is that the economy of the world is really based on frivolous, extravagance and and unnecessary entertainment that we waste our resources on. Now y'all bite that and grab it. The economy is down because you can't go sit at a restaurant and eat, but you got a you got a refrigerator full of food. The economy is down because you can't go to the mall and buy clothes, but you got 15 closets in your house full of clothes. The economy is down because you can't go buy another car, but you got three cars in the, in the driveway and you ain't but one person in the house. The economy is down because people are now recognizing what they don't need. <laughs> you better hear what I'm saying. Right now, there's a whole lot of stuff you thought you needed, but you can't get. And you found out, even though I can't get it, I'm still here. It didn't kill me not to have it. So here's, here's the reality. Coming out of this, you better take notes. Mm -hmm. Hear me. Take notes on the things that you thought you needed. And for the last two months, you haven't had a chance to get close to it. And you're still here. And you're still thriving. Mm -hmm. so, so now you start to see why it's so important for saints to understand the word because the word gives us understanding of how to be good stewards because we haven't been good stewards. That's why I believe it's been shut down. That's, that's one of the reasons. We haven't been good stewards. And, and, and see, see, you think stewardship, you always think about money. No. Stewardship is your entire management of the life that God has given you. How are you managing your life? Have you managed it well or have you just done what you wanted to do without input from the one who is in you? Whew. It's good stuff tonight, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. It's good stuff tonight. This is what John said. Baron Vandenberg. What's up, baby boy? L look at John. John says, I'm going to finish it this time. John 8, 31. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believe. So I'm talking to believers. If you're not saved, you need to come to Christ. You need to get, you need to get Jesus in your life. But I'm talking to believers right now. I'm talking to my, my, my church. I'm talking to the Union Baptist Church. Hear me, y'all. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide, that means you, you stop and dwell, you live. So I'm living in the word. I'm staying, I'm, 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 going, I'm going to stay right. I'm not moving. I'm not going to the left or the right. I'm going to abide in my word. He says, you are my disciples indeed. You are my learners. You are my followers. You are the ones uh, who I am designating to be the, the continuation of my manifestation. Dr. Manuel Scott, I love his his. Dr. Manuel Scott used to pastor the St. John Missionary Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. Dr. Manuel Scott used to say, the late Dr. Manuel Scott, he used to say that uh, Christianity 
uh, or the, the, the modern day Christian is the continuation of the manifestation of Jesus Christ. We are his continuation. And so in order to continue what he did, we got to do what he did and we got to be empowered by the way he was empowered. He was empowered, I told you, when the spirit alighted upon him and God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He was empowered to do the work that God had commissioned him to do. And that was to be our propitiation, to die for our sins. Are y'all hearing me? So John says that now Jesus is telling his disciples, those Jews who did not believe in Messiah, uh, uh, with him being Messiah, the, the, the chosen one, the anointed one who came with the anointing of God to deliver the people of God. They didn't believe that Jesus was him. And the Jews today still don't believe that that Jesus in the Bible that we understand to be Christ is him. So they believe these ones on in, in John 8, 31, they believe. He said, now, listen, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. Here it is. And in a world that is bombarding you with propagandized misinformation, verse 32 says, and you shall know the, say it, truth. And the truth shall not set you free. Read the Bible the way it's read, the way it's written. The truth will make you. See, you got to be created into a level, a level of freedom. You can't just open the lock. You, I told a story one time about about a bear that was donated to a zoo. And the bear uh, lived in a cage and, and because the cage was so confining, all the bear did was walk around in a circle, in a circle, in a circle, in a circle. And to condense the story, they finally let the, care out, the, bear, the bear out of the cage and when they opened the door of the cage, the bear didn't move. It just continued to walk around and around and around in a circle. They finally got the bear out of the cage. And when the bear got out of the cage, they slammed the door behind it. And the bear still continued to walk. All oh, this beautiful safari-like place that they had placed the bear in looked like the habitat of the bear. But the bear just kept walking around in a circle because the bear had been conditioned by its confinement. And y'all need to understand that you are being conditioned while you are confined to hear and to see what this world wants you to hear hear and to see. But Jesus said, first of all, if you abide in my word, hear me y'all, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know, you will have no under, no misunderstanding. You will know the truth and the truth will get you out of the cage and stop you walking in a circle. It'll make you move forward because it'll make you free. Are y'all hearing me? The word of God will loose you from what has held you and it will propel you into the place where God desires for you to be. But you got to abide in the word. Your temple got to be saturated with what is going to make the temple what it's supposed to be. You cannot be conditioned by what you see. You got to be conditioned by what you know. You shall know the truth. <laughs> and the truth is the word of God. I don't care what no preacher said. I almost done that. that let me skip real quick. I don't care what no modern day scholarship preacher tries to tell you about the inerrancy of scripture and they try to get all discombobulated talking about stuff that doesn't matter. The reality says the letter will kill you, but the but the spirit will give you life. We understand that there's been uh, 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 translations and after translations and after translations of the Bible. We're not stupid. We understand that in the translation, every time you develop Develop a new version of the Bible. You've got to change something. We ain't stupid, but I want you to know that the letter will kill you. I ain't worried about so much of the letter. I want to know the spirit behind the letter. And Jesus said, when you get the truth, it will make you understand that you are liberated by his power and his spirit. You are not liberated by no words on the page. The words on the page only point you to the one who is Mm, man, don't make me preach. I ain't trying to preach. Jesus will set you free. He will, he will make you to become what God has destined for you to become and not what the world is trying to condition you to be, which is an automaton. The world wants you to wake up to an alarm. The world wants you to have everything on your schedule beep, 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 doing exactly what it wants you to do. The world wants you to tune in to find out what happens next. No, you, you, you better start, look here, you, you, you better start tuning in <laughs> to 
find out what happens next. I, I'm not I'm not so much concerned with what y'all talking about. I want to know what the one who gives me life is talking about. Can I finish this text, y'all? And, and, and really, it's almost time to go. Watch this. Verse 32 says, you shall know the truth. Now listen to what he says. He says, you shall know the truth. Not, believe, not, not think about it, but know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Listen to the answer. They answered him, we're Abraham's descendants. Have you, have, and we've never been in bondage. I don't know what you're talking about, Jesus. Uh, 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 we've never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Y'all ain't never been in bondage either. So that, you, that you know of. That you realize. Are y'all hearing me? They, they said, we've never been in bondage to anyone. How are you going to say we'll be made free? Watch what Jesus says. Jesus said in verse 34, Most assuredly, I say unto you. <laughs> Watch this. Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Uh oh, wait a minute, Jesus. Wait a minute. Now hold up, Jesus. Hold up, Jesus. Wait a minute. You done, you done went on to a you, you've gone to a whole nother level here. We weren't talking about no sin. Uh-huh. And, 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 so, and so watch what Jesus says. He said, and a slave does not abide in the house forever. He said, but a son abides forever. Most surely, verse 34, I say unto you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. He says, and a slave doesn't abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son <clears throat> makes you free, you shall be free in deed. Now, I could, I could stop the passage there. He goes on and tells, and, and tells them the understanding of what this issue with Abraham was. But what Jesus is saying to us is that I've got to learn how to abide in his word because it is the word of God that will liberate me from anything that hinders the ability that God has placed in me through his spirit to operate fully in my life. That's what sin is. Y'all. Sin is a hindrance to the operation of God. Always has been. Are y'all hearing me? And, 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 and so we, we qualify sin in various ways and we make sin what we want it to be rather than what it really is. Um, our listening to so much negativity places us in a position to believe the negativity rather than believe the God who created us and empowers us through his spirit. That's sin. To know what God says to us to, to understand that God says you have been justified by Christ. You've been made right in the sight of God by Christ. To know that you have been empowered with the Holy Spirit for the purpose, first of all, of bringing others into relationship with Christ. And then to, to know that this Christ has told us that we are to walk by faith, for we've been justified by God, so the just shall live, walk by faith. Faith being that reasonable understanding that God is, and then the spiritual understanding that those things that I don't understand, I, mm -hmm, I trust to God. I can, I can, I can now shape my life based on what God says to me rather than what the world is showing me. That's the dichotomy, that's the, that's the duality of the life of a believer. I live in the world, but I don't live of the world. My, my understanding of what I ought to do does not come from what anything this world tells me my understanding of what I ought to do comes from my recognition that I am in a new kingdom. I'm no longer solely a part of this world. I, the Ephesian writer said, I got one foot in two places. 
said, I received all, I, I received every heavenly blessing or every blessing in spiritual places. I got, I got every blessing that God wants me to have in spiritual places. That's heaven. But yet I'm still here on earth. I have, I have the, the reality of what theologians call realized eschatology. Uh, I'm already in the kingdom, but I'm not yet experiencing it at, in its fullness. Yeah, I, we in the kingdom now. And so, and so, and so when Jesus prays just a few, a, 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 a book earlier in Matthew, or two books earlier in Matthew chapter uh, six, when, when he prays, and this, this is really one of the, one of the tenets of the church that you attend in Matthew chapter six, verse 10, he says, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Where? In earth. God help me here as it is in heaven. How does that happen? It happens because the kingdom citizens who have been empowered and packed and enamored and endowed with the spirit of the living God let go of what the world says and takes full assurance in what God says. That's faith. Faith ain't, I need a car. I'm going to lay my hands on it. Man, you stupid. Don't, don't even believe that stuff no more. Get out of that stuff. That's, that's baby Christian stuff. Faith says, when this thing is over and I lose my job and I got to go out on the street and put a tent up because I don't have no place to live, God is still good. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 talk to me about faith. I'm in the tent city, but I'm getting folks saved in the tent city because my trust in God is not based on my house, not based on my car, not based on my living conditions and all the stuff that I have, but I will trust God in every circumstance. That's why I had you type, I trust God. Mm -hmm. We trust God when it's good. Where's he at in your life when you ain't got jack? That's faith. Mm -hmm. yeah, my heart's done stop. Y'all quiet now. This is sobering thought, ain't it? Because I'm going to tell you right now, some of us are going to be in that position. And, and, and the expectation of God is, why would you believe that I'm less God when you don't have nothing than when you had everything? You believed he was God when you had everything. So now if you lose everything, he ain't God now all of a sudden? Oh, why is this happening to me? We always say that. You know, you, know why, you know why things happen to you? Because you live on earth. The rain falls on the just, just like it does on the unjust. Problems happen to the saints, just like problems happen to people who are not believers. You ain't exempt from that. But what you have, God help me here. You have something that other people do not have. I have the very inner presence of God himself, which tells me it doesn't matter what my, there it is, Lee, that's it right there. It doesn't matter what my circumstances are. God is still God. Why do you think, why do you think God chose these select presentations and, and, and empowered and impacted these persons who developed the canon of scripture that we have? to speak to us. I mean, it don't get no worse than Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, y'all. Go back and read that story. I know y'all like to, to, to blackenize it and talk about, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro, but, you know, read what they did. They trusted God to the point of being thrown in a fiery furnace. They said, listen, we're going to be the Columbine of this early Old Testament century. That little old girl that was at Columbine and that man put a big old gun in her face and said, now where's your God? I don't, I, you, you, if you deny your God, I'll let you live. She said, can't do that. And he blew her, blew her away, became a martyr for the kingdom. Do you have that much faith? Do you trust God that much? Do you believe that heaven that you talk about is so real that you'll die for him? See, that's real stuff right here. This, this rubber meet the road Christianity. And this is where we are, y'all. I'm going to say this, and, and I'm going to let y'all go, because I, I, I promised I was only going to keep y'all for an hour tonight. The Union Church, and every other church that's part of the body of Christ, we are in, in 2020, we are in an era that is the most closely aligned era to the first century church, I believe, than any other era 
of Christendom outside the first century. I think that, that we are in the time, we're starting to see, we haven't seen it in America, but we now are starting to see some of it, and it's not on the level that it is in other parts of the earth, but it's about to pick up. But we're seeing persecution of the church in ways we haven't seen since then. I, 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 uh, I uh, remember when my missions pastor uh, went to Bangladesh and India, and he sent me pictures back. And, and he, he witnessed this. There, there was a Christian pastor who was beheaded, and I have the pictures in my office right now, uh, for, for proclaiming the gospel. You don't see that here. Now, the suppression of the gospel is going to start happening, even as a result of this COVID thing. They're going to try to make it hard for churches to get back together. Um, I don't think that'll be a full, you know, they won't go through it in fullness, but they're going to make it difficult for churches to get back together. They may stop us from being on Facebook because the name of Jesus is trying to be eradicated and, and we've got to know where we are. And so if we understand what's happening from that capacity, then we got to understand who we are. I am the temple of God. I have been empowered, impacted, enamored, and endowed and endued with the very presence of God through his spirit. I am a connoisseur. I am a consumer of. I am a, 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 a fanatical word consumer. I abide in the word. I, I live through the word. I, I love the word. Are y'all hearing me? That's, 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 that's where we got to roll. Because we are empowered. The spirit gives us power to be able to live in a world that's going to be so confused. And God is not the author of confusion. We're, we're, we're going to be able to live and help and bring light where darkness is, we're going to be getting folks saved. We're going to be doing what God has commanded us to do. And it doesn't look like what we've been doing. Y'all need to hear me. It's going to be confusing for a lot of people because it doesn't look like what we've been doing. What we've been doing is going through the machinations uh, of, of ministry and church. But, but the reality is, um, there used to be a show talk about with a real something, something stand up. Right, right now, we're we going we gonna to experience with a real church. Please stand up. All of these, I, I love what Shanice said earlier. All of these the theologies that we've been teaching and, and, and these false theologies that have, that have now fallen through the cracks. Um, now God says, I, I, I can really give indication of who my church is. I can really show forth who my church is so that the world can be even greater uh, on a greater level impacted by the church. So uh, as we go forward, as we go forward, I want you to be smart. Amen. COVID is real. Be smart. When they start opening up the, the country, be smart. I'm going to tell you right now, don't, 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 don't text me. Tell my pastor, when are we going back to church? You are the church. Are y'all hearing me? You are, be the church where you are. Be the church in your home. Be the church on your, on your job. If you're, if you're still working, be the church uh, in your community. Be the church uh, with your family. We are the church. Whenever we get back to the sanctuary, praise God, we're going to have a, a shouting good time and all of that. But it ain't about all that. Those things are wonderful. The fellowship of believers is, is necessary. It's great. But it ain't about shouting and running and dancing. Now, thank God we had the opportunity to do that. But God said, I want you on a greater level as you come out of this, this pandemic. I want you on a greater level of understanding of what my church is all about. Are y'all hearing me? Our job is to show people who Jesus is by letting him come out of our lives through the moving of the spirit as we abide in the word and we trust in the Lord. That's it. 
The rest of it will take care of itself. I, I promise you the rest of it will take care of itself. Amen? All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you once again for bringing us into your presence. I love the you, God. I thank you for placing me in this great church. I thank you for these people who continue to love on you. Even now, I pray that you would empower us. Ah, give us a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. And we might understand, Lord God, that in times like these, faith is tested. Uh, let us pass the test. Let us come out with flying colors. Let us recognize, Lord God, that the trying of our faith is going to work patience in our lives. And we're going to let patience have its perfect work so that we can be pure, so that we can be lacking nothing as it relates to you. Help your people, God, now to grow. Give them strength in this hour. I pray, God, for all minds that have been impacted negatively. I pray that every 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 area, every level of psychological trauma that our people have experienced, God, we we, we pray that you would give them relief in the name of Jesus. And if they can't get relief, God, show them how to get help. Um, we pray, God, that you would not allow our egos to overshadow what we know to be right so that we might be able to position ourselves to continue your work. Thank you for how you bless us. Thank you for how you keep us. Thank you for how you're going to move us forward in the midst of this pandemic. We give you praise, honor, and glory. I bless God for every person on this broadcast tonight. Now, God, let us go forward and move forward by faith. This is the year of overcoming. We are victoriously overcoming. So we thank you for the overcoming spirit in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. This is the year of victoriously overcoming. And, and, and this is a new creation, new beginning month. It's resurrection month. Let God resurrect some things on the inside of you as he resurrected his son. Uh, go forward and let God do great things in your life. I love you, my brothers and sisters. And I done told you, there is nothing that you can do about it. And know this, that nobody else can do you like Jesus. Hey. There's not a friend like the Lord. Jesus gives everything that I could ever want and need. When I call him, he's not too busy to come and sleep around me. Stress.